Oh, hey everyone. I am Paul Radiker, and today we're going to be talking about the iPhone tennis match. Uh, Paul? Oh, I'm sorry. The iPhone 10s Max. All cheesy naming aside, this is why I regret getting the bigger 10s Max over the smaller 10s. Now a little disclaimer before I begin, these are all just my opinions. I know a lot of people do love the 10s Max, and honestly it does have some pros and also cons. But I, I just want to say this is my own opinion, I, know, I do respect other people's opinions, and so if you do like your 10s max or you think that my opinion is stupid that's okay but these are my opinions so just trying to get the word out there so that if anyone is trying to decide between the 10s max or the 10s hopefully these opinions will help you out a little bit so i have been part of the iphone upgrade program for a couple of years now i started with the iphone 7 plus that i got back in 2016 I believe. I think it was 2016. But yeah, that's how I started with the iPhone upgrade program. And ever since then, I've been upgrading every year since that is kind of a perk that you get with the program. You just pay a monthly payment over time and then after 12 payments, you get to upgrade and you just have to you know, pay the payments for the new phone, basically. So after my iPhone 7 Plus, about a year after that, actually a little over a year because it released in November, I upgraded to the iPhone 10. And I absolutely loved that phone. I mean, it was it was great. Like it was it was the perfect size. I got a similar screen size to what the iPhone 7 Plus had, but in the form factor of an iPhone 8 or you know an iPhone 7, like you know the the smaller size, and it fit perfectly in my hands. I had I mean I had no issues with it, um, but I did kind of think it'd be cool if Apple did make a phone that was about the size of the iPhone 7 Plus but had a, a bigger screen, you know, like a screen that would fit that kind of size of a phone. So, you know, of course, Apple did come out with a phone kind of like that the next year, the iPhone XS Max. And at first, when I was reviewing the announcement and stuff, I thought, oh, this is perfect. This is exactly what I've been looking for. So I upgraded to that as soon as, the, uh, as, soon as I was able to with the program. And I gotta say, I the first thing I noticed when I got the phone is that it was a lot bigger than I was expecting. I mean, it really was the the right you know the kind of size I was looking for, but I don't know. Like I, um, it just felt a little big. Like I, I couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't hold it in my hand as well as I could with the ten. Uh, like you know, I don't know if you can really tell. Like my hand barely fits around it. Um, and you know, I I have probably about average size hands. So I don't think it's that my hands are small. I mean, maybe for a guy, though, a little small. I think most guys would have hands a little bit bigger than mine, maybe. I don't know. But I got to say, it's it's a little big. And if you put a case on it, too, which I, I have a case. I just don't have it on for this video. The one I have, though, is super thin. But, yeah, if you have a case, that makes it even bigger. So, honestly, I feel like usability-wise, like if you want to use this phone easily with one hand... Unless you have super huge hands, which I definitely don't have, then I would I would not I would not get this phone if you want something that's usable with one hand. The second point, this might be a little bit of a minor one for some of you, especially people who live in areas that cars are not too important. But I live in an area where, you know, you have to drive everywhere over the car. Like we don't have a lot of public transportation. Um, you know, like pretty much cars are a necessity. So I, you know, I drive a lot of different cars because I actually work at a car dealership doing photography for them. And, you know, th there are a lot of cars that have a slot where you can like put a phone or, you know, something like that. But the problem is a lot of those cars have slots that are big enough for like a smaller phone. So, you know, if I try to put this phone in one of those slots, it won't fit. So like the car will have a design that allows for a phone to be placed into like a little slot where you put it in. But because this phone is so freaking huge, it doesn't even fit in there. So, I don't know. Like, that that's a little bit of annoyance for me. Especially if someday I end up getting a car that has something like that, and I can't even put my freaking phone in it. Another thing. The battery life on my 10 was, was fine. Like, I had no issues with it. I mean, I will admit that I did think it was really cool that the 10s Max had a better battery life. 
But honestly, I never needed to charge my tin much throughout the day. And actually, if I did, I have a wireless charger on my desk just behind me, actually. And whenever I'm working on something, I can just put pl- uh, just plop it on my charger, and boom, it's charging. Uh, same with my car, actually. In my car, I have a wireless charging pad in it. So whenever I'm driving, I just place my phone on it, and it charges. So I don't know. I, I think the battery life improvement on the 10s Max... I'm not saying this is. It, I'm not saying it's bad, but like it wasn't a necessary upgrade for me, if that makes any sense. Like between the 10s and the 10s Max, I feel like the 10s has, uh, like, it's a good enough battery life. It is better than the seven and the eight, but it, it you know it's gonna last throughout throughout the whole day. Like before I even had all this wireless charger stuff, I still last. I I never had to charge it throughout the day. Um, I mean, maybe if I played a game on it, I had to, but. I think most people don't play games on their iPhones that much. And if they do play a game, it's probably just a simple 2D game when they're trying to pass the time or something. Those aren't really going to drain your battery as much as like a 3D game or you know something serious like Fortnite. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you play games on your phone, then yeah, you might want to get something with a better battery life. But honestly, the battery life on my 10 and you know, same for the 10S is just fine. Like you don't need, in my in my opinion, at least, I did not need to get the 10s Max for a better battery life. I had just, I had a fine battery life on the 10. Now another thing, I know this probably kind of goes with the usability arguments I made earlier, but just trying to type on this thing, even with two hands, I just find it a little unusable sometimes. I did notice that with my iPhone 10, my hands felt a little bit cramped when I was trying to like type on that tiny little screen, but I, d- I just found that it was easier because I didn't have to move my thumbs as much. Like I was quicker at typing things. Um, you know, I, I didn't like when when you have a bigger screen like that, there's more movement with your thumbs, and I just found that I could type quicker on my 10. And I don't, I'm not sure why this is, but even more accurately too, it's a little odd considering that you know there are you know, the letters are more uh, close together, and somehow I actually was more accurate. Maybe it's just because my thumbs don't have to move as much, and I don't know, Some somehow, all I know is that somehow I, I had a more accurate typing experience on the iPhone 10. And, you know, I've had this phone for a few months now. You know, I got it in uh, late September when it released, and I don't know, I've just, I've had a worse typing experience on it. So... Yeah, it's never gotten more accurate as the the more I use it. And yeah, so I mean, if you type a lot on your phone, which you probably do, I mean, your phone is, you you know, a lot of people use it for texting and browsing the web, stuff like that. So if you type a lot on your iPhone, I, you know, this is just me. I know a lot of people do find it easier to type on the bigger screen, but I would just consider trying them in a store. Try typing on the phone and seeing which one you think you'd be more comfortable with. I didn't do that, which was a mistake. I should have, re- you know, I, I pre ordered the phone, of course, so I couldn't have tried typing on it ahead of time. And if I would have, I probably would have realized the 10 and the 10S just feel better in my hands for just using it and typing on it. Now, of course, there are some benefits to having the bigger screen. I'm not going to lie, there are some great benefits. For example, if I'm watching Netflix on this phone, it is an unbelievable experience. Now, I mean, the, the 10S has this as well, but that, that stereo separation that you get when you're watching movies and stuff like that on your phone, it's incredible. I like I, I don't know exactly how Apple did it. It's some scientific thing. But they, they um, create like a... Like if, you ever, if you've ever used headphones that have a virtual surround kind of thing like it like a spatial audio kind of thing it's a lot like that but it's it's not with headphones it's like the the speakers on the phone kind of create that same effect so it's it's a little bit like a surround kind of thing while you're watching movies and stuff like that especially on netflix i've noticed uh you, you really notice that crisp and just like surrounding audio when you're you know near the phone looking in front of it and um you know, with a bigger screen especially, the bigger HDR screen, it, it helps. Now, I, I didn't own an iPhone XS, which does have a slightly better screen than the 10, but I just I found that small screen a little hard to watch movies on at times. Honestly, though, if I could do it again, I would go back to the 10... I, I would get a 10S instead of a 10S Max 
even if I'm watching movies. Like, I just feel like the things I do every day on it, like go, you know, browsing Facebook, browsing the web, typing messages on it, just all the stuff that I feel like is a little hindered with a bigger display. And it'd be really nice to be able to type with one hand again, too. I, I don't think the, the better, you know, TV watching experience is, is uh, worth it to lose typing with one hand and just this is the overall usability there were just day-to-day things that i noticed that i found easier and just more enjoyable to do on my iphone 10 compared to the bigger screen on the 10s max now i'm not saying i don't like the phone i love it i'm just saying that i feel like compared to the smaller 10s i would have i i think i would have gotten the 10s if i would have had a chance to try out the two phones first because you know, I pre-ordered the phone, I just assumed, oh, this is going to fit perfectly in my hand. And since I could do stuff with one hand on the 7 Plus, I'd be able to do it on here. The problem is, is that this phone, there is a large area of screen below and above where the bezels would have been on the uh, 7 Plus. So, you know, for unlocking the phone, for example, see, I have to swipe from the bottom. So doing that with one hand, I can do it if I like move my hand around a little bit. But it's, it's not very easy. See, I have to kind of move my thumb all the way to the bottom and do that. With, um, you know, with, the, with the 7 Plus, I mean, I had to th- hit the home button too, which is a little close to the bottom. But overall, like, things were just easier because I usually would not have to reach my thumb all the way to the bottom of the display. So, or, you know, or, you know the, the top, like way up here. Because with the 7 Plus, the, uh, you know, the bottom of the screen was about right here, not like way up here. So if I wanted to get to the notification center or, you know, just hit a back button or something at the top of the display, I could kind of easily reach it. Like it wasn't that much of a deal. But with this phone, you know, if I want to go back on something, um, I don't know, like let's say, uh, you know, the notes app, for example, I have to reach my thumb all the way to this part of the screen, which it's, it's not easy to do. I, uh, that, that's one annoyance that, I, that I've had. It's, it's extremely hard to use the phone with one hand. And I, I really should have realized that before I pre-ordered it. It's too late to return it now. And, you know, if I were to sell it, I actually would still end up owing a lot of money on the lease that I have on it through the iPhone upgrade program. So it's just not worth it. Um, I'm just going to have to wait another year. And then hopefully they'll you know still have a smaller um, phone at that point that's, you know, comparable to the bigger phone. You know, th- these are my opinions. If you are trying to decide between the 10s and the 10s Max, or even the 10, because you can still buy that too, then I I would highly consider the smaller phone, uh, especially if you find usability with one hand as important to you as I do. Because you know, I I use I use my iPhone 10 with one hand all the time, and so I don't know. I just I feel like it was a bad decision to go with a bigger phone that I, I really should have realized I would not be able to use the same way. I mean, sure, it's it's cool to have a bigger screen. You, know, you get more screen real estate on a lot of apps, and you know you can also use a lot of apps sideways, which is really nice. You can't really see that, but you know, like the Messages app, when you turn it sideways, you get a more tablet-like interface. Same with Safari. Like when you open Safari on the iPhone XS Max, you you get you know a tab view at the top. You know, like a little um, like a tab, a line of tabs. You know, kind of like you get on the iPad. So you know, you get like some cool interfaces when you turn it sideways, just like you did with the iPhone Seven Plus and you like the, the Plus iPhones. One one problem with that. This is what I really don't like. With the Plus phones, you at least also had the home screen turned sideways whenever you turn the phone sideways. With the iPhone XS Max, you don't get that. So, yeah, you can turn app sideways and stuff, which is real nice. But if you're on the home screen and you turn it sideways, it doesn't move. So it's almost like they don't want you to turn it sideways. And honestly, I just can't use it like a tablet like I did with my iPhone 7. I I remember with my iPhone 7 Plus... I used to, um, I, when I had it in my car, I had a little, you know, I had that dash mount that I put on my, you know, on my, um, on my dash in my car and I would turn it sideways and it's cool because I could still use it that way pretty well because even the home screen was sideways too. But with my iPhone XS Max, I can't do that or at least not without sacrificing some usability because the home screen does not rotate with it. 
So, you know, I can use most of my apps, like, you know, my Maps app and all of that stuff in Landscape View. But as soon as I want to switch to a different app that's not, you know, in the recently open apps, I have to um, I have to navigate a home screen that's not in the correct orientation. You know, it's it's gonna it's not gonna look right, and it's gonna be harder to to read. And um, so, you know, it's it like I'm I'm kind of forced to just have my phone in portrait on my dash for like viewing GPS and stuff while I'm driving. I I just like it's okay. But I, I'd rather prefer, like I'd really prefer to have a landscape view while I'm driving, and because I go to the home screen so often when when I'm in my car, it just doesn't work because I I, I don't want to go to a home screen and then find out that it's it's not in the correct orientation. Like it would have been so much nicer if they could have found a way to have the home screen and landscape like like they did with the Plus phones. So I don't know. I I mean I like the bigger screen, but I also wish that I could have the usability back that I had with my iPhone 10. So guys, that's what I have for you today. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, you can do that too. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please consider doing that. I also just hit 100 subs recently, so thank you everyone for that. I really appreciate it. This has been Paul Radiker, and I will see you in the next video.